Simon's 181st article, The Called Ones. Two of my most recent articles, The Special Ones and The Chosen Ones, do a pretty good job, well, in my opinion anyway, of illustrating how God chooses who will become believers, also known as members of the body of Christ or more united, and how us believers have absolutely nothing to do with our calling, nada, zilch. Today's article is, or should be, a nice bookend to the, these two articles. Again, I will prove through scripture how God does the calling and how us believers end up being the beneficiaries of the, gr the gratuity of the grace of God. Ephesians 3, 7. As always, I turn to Paul, the apostle of the nations, the man chosen to bring the evangel of the grace of God to the world. Take it away, Paul. He may not be ashamed, then, of the testimony of our Lord, not yet of me, his prisoner, but suffer evil with the evangel in accord with the power of God, who saves us and calls us with the holy calling, not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before times Ionian, yet now is being manifested through the advent of our Lord Savior. Christ Jesus, who indeed abolishes death, yet illuminates life in corruption through the evangel, of which I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and a teacher of the nations. 2 Timothy 1, 8, 1, 8 through 11. As in Paul's, won't this, this is a bit of a run on the sentence, but... It packed with so much truth that I decided to quote the entire thing, even though I don't, I'm only going to refer to the following short passage. God who saves us and calls us with the holy calling, not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his purpose. Who saves us? God. How? Through the sacrifice of his only begotten Son. As we read here, Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15 And here, while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Romans 5.8 And we're all sinners, don't you know? Now who calls us? That's right, God. Before we go any further, let's take a quicker, take a quick gander at the word calling. The Greek word for calling is transliterated. Clasis. Clasis and strong, strong concordance defines the word as a calling. The Greek English keyword concordance of the concordant letter in the New Testament gives the English element of Clasis. Clasis is calling and defines the word thusly, calling in the sense of an invitation or a vocation. God invites us to be believers. Thing is, it's an offer we can't refuse. After all, he's God and we're not. Or to put it scripturally, God is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. Ephesians one eleven, and whom he calls is in accord with his will, not ours. That's why he's sovereign and we ain't. Okay, so God must call some pretty damn decent people, right? Ask Mr. and Mrs. Born Again who think they're some pretty damn decent people, despite what they believe, which actually makes them unbelievers. Um, didn't you read the next bit in that passage I quoted? Not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his own purpose. Our, our acts, no matter how repulsive, have nothing to do with whether or not we are called. After all, we were chosen by God. We were chosen by God before the disruption of the world. Ephesians 1 4, which was a long time ago, really long, even before Adam came on the scene. And since believers are sealed or secured by God, read sin and grace in the body of Christ for more info. There is nothing we can do to lose our designation as believers. Dig. Nothing consequently is now condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. Again, I encourage you to read sin and grace in the body of Christ if you're having a problem with this scriptural truth. Back to the previously quoted passage, not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his own purpose. In accord with whose purpose? That's right, again, God's. Okay then, who does he choose? Ask Mr. and Mrs. Born again, terribly confused, because this ain't what they, they've been taught. Take it away again, Paul. The stupidity of the world, God chooses that he may be described 
that he may be disgracing the wise and the weakness of the world. God chooses that he may be disgracing the strong and the ignoble and the contemptible things of the world. God chooses that which is not, that he should be discarding that which is, so that no flesh at all should be boasting in God's sight. 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29. Kind of explains why I refer to believers as morons united, huh? The above passage of scripture ties in nicely with the following, one of my favorites. For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you, it is God's approach present, not of works. At least anyone should be boasting. For his achievement are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand, that we should be walking in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. At least anyone should be boasting, for his achievement are we. Us losers, also known as believers, can't boast about anything. Especially our being saved and being called after all, we're God's achievement, not our own. God's the one doing our molding and shaping as he conforms us to the image of his son. Romans eight twenty nine. Yeah, that's right. In the appealing eons, Ephesians one twenty one, us losers are going to be Christ. Well, you're just digesting that. I, n I think now's the perfect time to quote the following passage. For my designs are not your designs, and your ways are not my ways, of bearing as Yahweh. For as the heavens are loftier than the earth, so are my ways loftier than your ways, and my designs than your designs. Isaiah 55, 8-9, no kidding. And may I add, thank God. I commend to you the following video by my friend and fellow brother in Christ, Rob Wow, for a scriptural study in the word calling. Love, grace, and peace. Have a wonderful day and wonderful night, and God bless you all.